Hello everyone, welcome to Hashtag and Macarbox channel. Today's video is about how to test a fuel level sending unit using a digital ohm meter. This test is very simple and is definitely necessary when trying to troubleshoot a fuel gauge that is not working properly because when you have an incorrect fuel level reading on your dashboard, it could be caused by the fuel level sending unit not sending the correct signal, it could be a bad fuel gauge, or it could be a wire that is disconnected or maybe it's grounded somewhere. So by knowing how to test the sending unit, then you're going to be able to eliminate that possibility or pinpoint that that is your problem, either or. One way or another, you're going to be able to find out whether this is your problem or not. For viewers that may not even know what this is, this is the entire fuel pump module that goes inside a fuel tank. So it will be necessary to remove the whole module to do this test that I'm going to show you. But once you're exhausted all your other options and you're suspecting that this is your problem, you're going to have to remove it either way. So I'm going to show you how to test it. That way you'll know if it's bad or not. So I'm going to aim the camera up close. That way you can see how this test is done. Okay, so the first thing is to set your multimeter on 200 ohms right there, which in this one is the lowest setting. And I'm going to go ahead and use the ground to ground it, obviously. Just going to set it right there. Make sure it's touching metal. And then the positive, the wire for the fuel level sending in it is yellow. So very simple. I'm just going to put the positive right there. Make sure it's only touching that and nothing else. So right now it has 16.1. And it's completely empty. It's all the way down. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and move the float. How this works, this float is empty, there's air inside, and it's very light, it's made out of brass, some of them are made out of plastic. So when you start pumping fuel, and it starts rising, then this is going to go up. And if you look at the reading right here, the resistance changes. As I move the float, the resistance continues to increase so there so I have it all the way to 108.6 when I get a little closer so you can see it right here so I'm going to hold this right here now that you can see the float and I'm going to move it back down very slow see the resistance starts to decrease just like that it's down to 16.3 right there 16.4 obviously it's very sensitive any movement and it changes and I'm just going to raise it back up just one more time this time a little faster I got this wires on the way here, but I'll go ahead and make sure it moves all the way up. So if it touches the metal, it will go all the way to 114.7.8 roughly, and then back all the way down fast this time. 16.0. So like I said, very very sensitive, and because this is a resistor, obviously the resistance is going to change. Very obvious, right? Uh, of the signal that is going to travel back so your gauge can read what's in the tank. Very simple. One of the things that you need to consider when you're testing your fuel level sending unit on your application is that every vehicle is going to have different specs. The resistance is going to vary depending on what kind of make and model you have. You just make sure that you have a very smooth change when you move the float up and down. That way you know if the signal changes gradually and you don't have spikes of going very high on the resistance or very low in between or in the middle because sometimes that's what happens to some vehicles you have a gauge that if it only has half a tank and all the sand goes all the way to full or all the way to empty and that's because there's something wrong in the resistor right here if it goes all the way to full it gets grounded if it goes all the way to empty somewhere in between it's because it just loses connection in that section of the resistor and it could be that once it starts going down or going up it starts reading the normal fuel level again 
because those are symptoms of a bad resistor inside here. As you can tell, this is very, very simple, and the hardest thing is to remove the entire fuel pump module completely out. But aside from that, as you can tell, the test is super easy to do. So there you go. Now you know how to test a fuel level sending unit. Thanks for watching today's video. See you next time.